It is indeed a pleasure to welcome my guest, the Education Officer of the Oil Field Workers Trade Union. He is Mr. Ozzy Warwick. Mr. Warwick, good morning. How are you, sir? Hi, good morning to you, Reddy, and of course, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I know that you have had a very busy morning, so I am very thankful that you are able to squeeze us in this morning. There are a couple of issues coming out of this. The OWTU President General Ansel Roger, your president, said the protest was the first wave of action meant to highlight the company's lack of concern for security following the death of Curtis Pear, who jumped into a petrol tank, uh, tank filled with oil at Trinmar Farm uh, on October the 8th. Was this enough reason to call a strike or, or differently phrase? Well, the was, wrong tools, was, yeah, mm-hmm. which is different. Yeah. Yes. Um, right. Well, I, I think so when you consider what could have been the implications of a major oil facility um, where its security was breached by a member of the public. Because I think first thing you need to understand, no member of the public is supposed to be on a tank farm. Let's yes. be clear about that. Because if that's the case then you, yeah, there are a whole range of things that can happen that could put at risk the facility itself, but also put at risk the lives of workers. And because of how, remember, it's a tank farm, so therefore you have pipes running through the fence line communities. So mm-hmm. could you imagine, for one moment, could you just imagine if, the, if the, uh, this member of the public had a different intention mm-hmm. and would have ignited that facility, then, you know, you know we'll be having a very different conversation this morning. A frightening and one, the, yes. And, and the cost of what that would have meant would be nothing. I mean, it would be astronomical. The uh, environment, then remember, it's a tank. This tank is filled with oil, you know. Yes, So yes. the environmental disaster, mm-hmm. destruction of the community, loss of life, and huge costs. So yes, I think it, when you can, when you put it all into one context, then you realize yes, these workers did the right thing to highlight this major issue of the security and safety of the very precious and valuable oil facilities throughout Trinidad and Tobago. The voice you hear is that of Ozzy Warwick. Ozzy, when, when I spoke to you earlier, I asked you, I said, one of the areas we have to discuss is the statement of the president. If the country must suffer to realize how dire this is, then let it be so let the country suffer. I think you just made the point. It would have been much more costly in lives and property, and the nation would be at Can way you greater imagine? risk. Yes. Wow. Because remember, the, the wealth, of course, uh, the action was precipitated by the recent events. This issue of security of our facilities we've been raising over and over and over, mm-hmm. and the management have not been paying attention. In fact, you know what happened? You had the chief security officer, as we raised the issue, as we informed them, listen, we are finding dead bodies in the mm-hmm. field. Pumping jacks are going missing. Yes. Equipment going missing, so there's definitely a breach around the perimeters of these facilities. You know what it is? He reduced the security arrangement, Rennie. That was a decision that they took. And look at what happened. Look what could have happened even worse. Could you imagine? So, of course, I think the workers and, of course, the president general, understanding the seriousness of this, mm-hmm. recognizing that our voices are just going on deaf ears, had to, and this is the context in which he made this statement. He, the workers had to take a, a stand, had to take an action that will let the country know, let the country know that, listen, this is very, very serious. Because, you know, one of the issues uh, we have been highlighting, hello, Rennie, are you I'm here. I'm, here, I'm yeah. here with you. Go one ahead, One of the please. issues is that these state enterprises, Rennie, belong to all of us. That's right. And therefore, we have to hold to account decisions and actions that are taken by the management of these enterprises that put at risk people's lives, but put at risk our facilities, because these assets, the tanks, the pipes, the plant, the equipment, belongs to all of us. We, we are entrusted with it. And therefore, um, the population, if, we, if the workers did not do that, do you think the population would have known that a decision was taken to reduce security in, 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 in Petrogen? Do you think the country would have known that at the moment you have our our very precious valuable assets mm-hmm. are currently at risk because when this incident happened i don't think people paid careful attention to the fact that this was a man from the public he's not a worker and you're not supposed <laughs> to have access 
to these facilities as easily as he did. Well, there I don't think people paid p- proper attention and the risk of such of, of, of something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Ozzy Warwick is my guest. He's the education officer of the Oilfield Workers Trade Union. Just so that our listeners get a, an idea of what we're talking about, what is arguably arguably the largest estate enterprise, Petro Trend, is what we're talking about. That they spread over a period of uh, a, an area of 68,000 acres of land. That is a lot to protect. And um, you were saying that uh, Mr. Cleve Richards, who is the CSO, took the decision mm-hmm. to reduce uh, by 50% the security around these areas after, reduce after, in fact... Can you imagine? Mm, uh, so is, is this the, 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 the reason why there seemed to be this... Uh, well, not seemed to be. There was a demand made by Mr. Roger that uh, Mr. Cleve Richards be removed while the investigation the invest- is correct. taking place. That is correct, and that makes mm. sense because you're talking about um, a major uh, security breach and therefore, when you're doing the investigations, you're not looking at one aspect. You're looking at several layers, several elements, several aspects. You're looking at systems, etc. And, of course, he was responsible for all of that. So what you want is an independent investigation to get to the heart of this thing so that we can ensure that we secure our assets, our precious, valuable assets. Now, mm-hmm. I hear the members of the public saying, at this time, why the workers would take such a, an action um, in bearing in mind oil prices, all, Renny, all I have, listen, a body in a tank is not part of the process of refining oil. Eh? I just want to be clear about that. That's not part of the process, in case persons didn't know. And could you imagine, first of all, the loss, because you had to drain the tank, yes. because that's an active tank. You had to drain the tank to look for the body. So why don't we talk about the cost of that? Because that is that that cost is far more than what um, would have been a, impacted by the actions of the workers. But what the actions of the workers would have done by highlighting this and getting them to act and to move and to do the proper thing, we would have secured we would have secured um, our precious multi-billion dollar. Oil facility. Mm-hmm. I know that the Vice President of Human Resource and Corporate Service, Neil Derrick, said that uh, they acquiesced to the demand that CSO Cleve Richards be removed temporarily and a meeting was set up. Is this meeting, uh, was there a fixed time set towards addressing the situation? Sorry, repeat that. I know that uh, the CSO, Cleve Richards, was removed, right. according to Neil Derrick, who is the Human Resource and Corporate well, Services. We want to see correspondence to that effect, Rennie, because mm-hmm. that is what the problem was in the first place. Because at a meeting on Monday, they said that he was, and then only to, lo and behold, the next day, um, we got correspondence which said differently, and that aggravated mm. the workforce. That aggravated. Can you imagine? <laughs> So we we have to wait and see um, in black and white, all right, whether this is indeed so. Ozzy Warwick is my guest uh, this morning. Uh, Ozzy, there are two uh, areas that I want to get clear. Um, is this singularly a security issue? Because, yes, you make a very good case that I, I, I think anyone would be hard-pressed not to, um, to, to agree with you on or to argue with. But is this singularly the, uh, the, the reason? Or uh, Mr. Roche is calling for a settlement of outstanding wage negotiations in that same discussion he had with workers. Folks are wondering if the conflation of issues is... Uh, um, the, 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 the security so issue with the man jumping the tank is a good... It's two, it's two separate things. But yes. Remember, at that time, he's addressing his workforce. And, of course, workers would want to... You, you, don't, you have to address several things because workers have several issues, right? Yes. But it's two, the action itself had nothing to do with that. that the action had to do with the issue with, of securing and our facilities. But, but we cannot ignore the fact that, indeed, we are still um, with outstanding negotiations. And here it is. Only the OWTU in Oren. Only the OWTU at Petrotrin, T and Tech, N P U E U T T. See that five, all of them. All none of none of them have been settled. And the, who is what is the common factor is that they are represented by the oil workers mm-hmm. trade union. And they're the only ones that have not 
been settled. All right, I, like I, I mean, said, that, because that tells us something. Being understood, but as it was said at the at the same meeting, one wondered whether this was pretext, and and, and I, I'm glad that you cleared that up. <laughs> My final question to you, however, uh, and thank you again for making the time. Trinmar no workers problem. continue to stay off the job on Friday as they continue okay. to strike action um, against the Inland Offshore Contractors Limited, one of yes. uh, uh, three contractors charged with transporting marine be, uh, workers to the Salado fields. Explain to us what yes. is the situation with those workers. Okay, um, I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to, to speak about that because you see, right there you see an example of the grave disparity and inequality that exists in Trinidad and Tobago. Here you have a contracting company um, which have been contracted by Petrotrin to provide marine transportation. But this employer, this contractor, wants to pay his workers one-third of what the minimum, not, not even medium rate or maximum rate, but, ref, but wants to pay his workers one-third of the minimum rate of pay for workers doing the same job. That is absolute exploitation because, remember, he is contracted by Petrotrend, so he gets money, Okay. So you want to collect how many millions of dollars worth of contract, but to pay your workforce who provide the service, which ensure that you have a contract in the first place, you are want to pay those workers one third the minimum rate. That is very unfair, unjust. And so the workers haven't endured this for a long time, haven't expressed their concerns and saying, listen, all we are asking is for you to just pay what you're supposed to pay. What is the correct rate? I'm doing a job like uh, like uh, anybody else, and there is a fixed minimum rate of pay. Pay me that. that that's all we're asking. Um, and so the workers um, set up of talking and, of course, raising this issue, have decided to serve legal um, strike notice. We will keep so our... Since Thursday at 10 a.m., they have been on strike and they continue to be on strike. It's a 90-day strike. In the in the sixty in the six, 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 sixty seconds, I get in my tongue all twisted up here. In the sixty mm -hmm. seconds I have remaining, are the ninety days the company is saying that they will let this go to the industrial court? They, they, the, the company says what? Uh, that they will um, refer this to the industrial court after the ninety day strike. Well, what that means is that for 90 days, let me tell you the impact and the implications of that. That means for 90 days, worker, offshore workers will not be going to the platform, and therefore we will not be getting offshore oil. Mm. And if, if they want to take that position, now you tell me what is in the best interest of Trinidad and Tobago. That is you right. have an employer who is willing to say, hey, I rather than pay the workers what they're supposed to pay, I rather this country. Now let's talk, you know, Let's see who is really suffering the country. Rather than pay workers what he's supposed to pay, he rather hold the country to ransom for 90 days. And these employers and the Employers Consultative Association, the TTMA and the Chambers of Commerce say nothing about that. Ozzy Warwick, we had the ECA with us this morning, and we talked about some of that, but I know you were in your press conference. I can only thank you for taking the time to uh, give us your side, the OWTU side of this argument. Thank you so much for the, for the clarity from your organization. I appreciate you taking the time this morning. Okay, no problem.